Hey guys, Claw Wolf here, and we are back in the Quantum Labs thing. Uh, I just wanted to have a specific room to go over this, but we are going over scoreboard operators, and there is a reason why I'm making my own video on this. Uh, there's other videos out there that is really great. They help me out, uh, one by one of my good friends, Wreckabilly. Um, but I'm going to go over it again, because not everybody knows it. Some people are new nowadays. Maybe they think that his videos don't work, or other people's videos don't work. So I'm going to go over it. Um, myself, and I'm going to explain some things that even I don't think he explained too well, and I'm going to have some tips and tricks, uh, and we're going to do this, and the reason why, so you may, maybe some of you are more experienced command blockers, and you know how to use scoreboard operations, the next step is going to be showing you how to solve scoreboard operations on paper, which will help you solve scoreboard operations in game for really complicated systems, because I actually did find out some cool math things you can do on paper if you're into that kind of stuff um, to solve these things uh, that aren't typical rules that you would know, but I came up with a couple rules of my own that don't really follow any laws, but I'm going to go over it in a later video. If this is you're watching this kind of late, it might already be up, so go ahead and check that out. There will probably be a playlist for it, um, but what we're going with this, this video is going to show you how to use scoreboard operations, uh, and the next few videos is going to show you how to apply scoreboard operations uh, in a mini game or on a server or something like that. But let's start with the basics. We are going to go over how to use scoreboard operations. So on the side, I have a scoreboard called operations to show you what's going on with the numbers. We have two scores, one and two. These are dummy scoreboards, so they're just show us numbers. These commands will let me increase the one scoreboard. This will let me increase the two. You see this because I'm doing, I have a scoreboard operation going on right here, but um, we can talk about that at the end if you want. Um, so I'm going to make my one, two, and my two, one. Oh, Let's just be consistent. My two is two and my one is one. So there's a couple scoreboard operations we're going to go over them. They start, I put them in increasing difficulty. So equals. So this scoreboard operation is the equals operation. So to do a scoreboard operation, you have to do scoreboard players operation to prompt it. It's like now we are doing an operation, not a regular adding or subtracting, or maybe there is. Um, but operations are a little bit special. So the format is you do scoreboard, players, operation. That's always the same. Then you do the player you want it to apply to and the scoreboard. Then you do the operation, the symbol, and then you do the next player you want it to apply to in the other scoreboard. So you can do it all on the same player. This one is execute. This is making it at A. So everybody's scoreboard, that is one. So whatever score they have on the scoreboard of one is equal to everybody. Uh, everybody's score on two. So one scoreboard, everybody's first number one scoreboard score is equal to everybody's number two scoreboard score. So my number one is one, my number two is two. So one is going to equal, uh, my score here is going to equal my score here. So if I click it, uh, the one becomes a two because my one, my score on one was one and my score on two is two. So my one is going to equal the two. So one equals two, that's basically what you're doing. Uh, the first number equals the second number. The first score equals the second score, okay? So I'm just gonna go back to the what you have before. So that one's pretty easy. This is basic. What you can do with it is, I actually, that's what this thing over here is. Um, you can use multiple players. So this one is using fake players. So it's saying that on the operation scoreboard, which is the scoreboard you're seeing in the side, so we have three. We have scoreboard called one, scoreboard called two, and we have one called operations. So the score, the player whose name is one, which will just be an invisible player that you'll never see, um, their operation scoreboard is equal to everybody's score on score one. So my score scoreboard objective sets play sidebar one. So my one, my scoreboard called one, I have a score of one on it, right? So my score there is equal to this guy's score on here. So one is equal to one, and it does the same thing with two. My score on here, which is two, is equal to this guy's, this player's score on here, which is two. So it just sets them equal to each other. Uh, so next is the plus. So this is plus equal. So it's saying that this guy, so everybody's score on score one, plus equals everybody's score on score two. So the thing is, they don't have plus, minus, multiply, divide. They have plus equals, minus equals, multiply equals, and divide equals, which is a little bit different. What it's going to do is it's going to look at our second, or take our first scoreboard, and it's going to add it to the second one and make that the first one. So 
one plus, so let's say I have, let's give you an example. So here we have a score of one on one and two on two. So one plus two equals one. So one plus two equals three. Three is going to be my score on score one. So I click this and score one now has three on it. So the scoreboard of one is three because it did the first one plus the second one equals the first one again. Three plus two equals five. Five plus two equals seven. Seven plus two equals nine. Just like that. Um, so then we're going to go to subtract and it's just the opposite. So it's going to do one, the first score, minus what's on the second score equals the first score. So nine minus two equals seven. 7 minus 2 equals 5, 5 minus 2 equals 3, and two, 3 minus 2 equals 1. Uh, if you, you can go negative as well if you want, but I'm not going to deal with that. See, here we have negative 1, but we're not going to deal with negatives for this, these examples. So we have adding and subtracting. If you're wondering why they have to do the plus equals and the minus equals, is they need a place to store the answer. So you can't, like, where's the answer going to go? The reason why they have plus equals is they're storing it on that first thing you pick it to store on. So we're we're adding the two together and storing it under the scoreboard called one, if you're wondering why they do that. Otherwise, where does the answer go? So then what the next one is, is times equals. So this one, as you might know, it takes the first one times the second one, and it's going to set that as the first score. So one times two equals two. So number one, score or score on score one, is going to equal two. The result of that, which is 1 times 2. So it's going to equal 2. So then it's going to do 2 times 2 equals 4. Then it's going to do 4 times 2 equals 8. Just like that. Divided equals does the opposite. So the first one divided by the second one. So 8 divided by 2 equals 4. 4 divided by 2 equals 2. 2 divided by 2 equals 1. So we're back to the beginning. Now, the most important thing to note here is that with Command blocks, there's no decimals. So you can't have 1.5, you can't have 1.4. So notice what happens when I do the multiplies. So I'm back up to 2, right? So now I give myself, my score 1 is at 3. What is 3 divided by 2? It's 1.5, okay? But with operations and scoreboards, it's going to cut off the decimal. So instead of 1.5, it's just going to be 1. So check this out. There you go. It's just 1 again. So that's important because if you're having some kind of like percent, so say you want to create a system where um, you want to find 10% of the number, you have to multiply it by 100 and then divide it back. Okay, so we basically have the four basic uh, math things. You have plus, minus, times, divide, um, and then you also have this idea of cutting off the decimal place. So the last operator is probably the weirdest of all the operators. It is the percent equals operator. I forget the, if there's a special name for it, but it's got its own formula that is a little bit complex. So we're going to go into it right now. So it's pretty simple. You just do percent equals to cre make it do the percent equals operator. Um, but as you'll see, I'm just going to get uh, just a 1 when I click this. Uh, this, I couldn't find out much about it. I'll probably talk about it in the next video more. Um, but, uh, this kind of has to do with cutting off all the numbers except for the last one. So if you have like 126, uh, and you use the percent operator of 10, so you do 126 percent equals 10. So if two scoreboard players set at P2, uh, I mean, one, 126 and two will give you 10. Uh, watch what happens when we do this. It just gives you six. So it has to do with something about cutting off, uh, using the second number to cut off a certain amount of the first number and leave you with just the last one or something like that. Because let's see what happens when we do 127. Yeah, so when we do 127, it cuts off and it gives you seven. So this could be useful for percentages when you're calculating percentages. Uh, like if you want to take a certain percent of something. But just keep in mind that the percent doesn't mean that you're doing like... 10% of 20. It's not that in particular. You're not actually doing 10% of 127. 10% of 127, uh, yeah, so 10% of 127 will be 12.7. So my guess is it probably takes the percent, whatever percent you put there of the number above, and then it gives you whatever your decimal results would be, but I don't know 100% for sure. Uh, we can always play around with it. Uh, maybe make our number two number 
8 and 6 and click this button and what will we get? Uh, we still get a 6. So uh, it's a little weird. So there's not too many instances when you actually use it. Um, but we'll go over more exactly what it's doing when we get into it. Because uh, I looked into it and that function might not work all the time. It only works... I found it on a couple different websites, so I figured it might work, but it does not work 100% of the time. So we'll, I'll do some testing with it to figure out exactly what we can use this for. Uh, but for now, you know the times divided by plus minus, those are the most important ones that you'll use, and the equals as well. Uh, side note, if you're adding something, if I'm just, if I'm going to do at a1 plus equals at a1, well, let's just see, 5, if I click this one, at a1 plus equals, I'm just going to double it, so it's going to be 10. Um, that's how you can, you can double things. You can do things like that. But for the most part, if you want to just add, like, add something like a small amount, you just use the scoreboard players add at a one, one, just do that. Don't do, don't set the, a separate score equal to 10 and then plus equals, uh, I mean, you still use the add and the remove for plus and minus. If it's really simple, it only really has to do with when you're comparing multiple scoreboards. So then just that was a long video, so I'm going to let you guys rest there and kind of understand, try and understand what I was talking about. So this one thing to leave you with some food for thought is with uh, servers. So if you're running the these commands on a server, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to execute at a specific player first because the selector right here, the at A, um, when I do at A, it's going to do it to everybody is equal to everybody. So it, it might confuse the system if there's multiple people. Uh, or if you want to only do it to a specific player, you can't do at P or at A. If you do at A tag equals a certain tag, at A tag equals another tag, it'll really, it'll get buggy and confused. So for best efficiency to make sure 100% will work, you execute at A. And then if you have like a certain thing, like, oh, when their score of coins is equal to five or something of that matter. You just execute at that specific player, and you create this command at the player, which will do, um, and actually, it should be at P in a radius equals 0, 1, equals at P in a radius equals 0, 2. So the at P radius equals 0 will make sure it's only doing it to me. So it's executing at every, everybody and setting only my score to only my score. Um, otherwise, you're going to have some bugs where there's... Uh, my score is getting set to other people's score and stuff like that. So it's really important to use the executes uh, if you're on multiplayer, if you're thinking of this in a multiplayer sense. If you're just doing this single player sense, then you could just just use the operation. But anyways, guys, thanks for listening. If you've gotten this far in the video, if you fast forwarded, uh, maybe you should go back some time to figure out how to use these. Uh, if you're Once you get this down, the next part will be a little easier, but we're probably going to cover some math and some things that I came up with. Uh, today actually, but I decided let's make a video uh, so they can reference so I can reference something that I've talked about before that has to do with scoreboard operations. So you're not all left in the cold. Um, so yeah, so this is really useful for doing anything, and I really think that if you learn how to use the scoreboard operations, you will definitely be able to do a lot more that you might not have thought you've been able to do in the past. Anyways, guys, thanks for showing up and listening in. If you like these kind of videos, leave a like on the video, and I will try to make more simple tutorials like this on command blocks. Maybe a lot simpler if this was too much for you to understand. Maybe you don't even know what the scoreboard command is like and how to use it, so maybe I can make a simpler scoreboard command video for you. Um, but I wanted to kind of tend towards uh, more advanced command block creators because there's not too many videos for them out there. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you all later.